Okay, so this is the second part of 2.5 part A, and in hours four and seven, we didn't quite get into part B. So um, we're going to start here with the domain of a function. So we have functions that can be described uh, both explicitly or implicitly with their domain. And so what you're going to see here with this function is what we call an implied domain. So the domain excludes all x values that result in the division by zero. So you guys already know how to do this. You would set x squared minus four. You know that can't equal zero. You would factor x can't equal plus or minus two. So that's what they're saying right here. So it's basically implied that the domain consists of everybody but plus or minus two. And if I put in plus or minus two for x, I would get undefined. I would try to divide by zero, and I can't do that. So the implied domain is that x can't be plus or minus two. And we've written that before with interval notation. All right, so that function has an implied domain. Um, functions with a denominator with x in it could have an implied domain like this one. Up here, when we saw this function, um, right here, this is called an explicit domain. So it's given to you. So explicit, the domain will be written with the problem. Implicit, it's understood to be there. So when we look at this next problem, with the square root of x, the domain excludes x values that result in even roots of negative numbers. So it's got an implied domain of zero to infinity, including zero. And before, we took what's underneath here, and we set it greater than or equal to zero, which is this right here. Now I know in first hour, we went ahead and talked about this a little bit more. And we talked about the fact that what if we have a cube root? Does that also have an implied domain of zero to infinity? And the answer is no. You can take an odd root and the domain is all reals. For example, I can do the cube root of negative 27 and get negative three. I can do the cube root of negative eight and get negative two. I can do the cube roots of positives as well. So all reals for your domain for this one. But if I turn that into a square root or an even root, then I have to uh, restrict my domain. All right, for example five, you're just going to be talking about your domain for each function. So for this first one, it's going to be the set of all your x values, negative three, negative one, zero, two, and four. And you must use the brackets that are shown. For this one, it's got an implicit domain. It's implied that x cannot equal negative five. So I could write my domain as negative infinity to negative five, union negative five to infinity. You could also do set builder notation. It's all x such that x can't equal negative five. So you can do either set of notation there or type of notation. So that or this, you don't have to have both. For the volume of a sphere in geometry, the radius represents a length and radius is always positive. It doesn't make any sense to have a radius that is uh, zero. So the domain for R would be zero to infinity or R has to be greater than zero. And for this last one, we know whatever's under the radical has to stay positive or zero. So we're just gonna take it out, greater than or equal to zero. It's also going to have an implied domain. I'm gonna work on solving it for x. Dividing by a negative, we'll flip it back. And so the uh, domain would be, um, let's see, negative infinity to four thirds with a bracket. Let me fix this real quick. Or if you wanted set builder, it's all x such that x is less than or equal to 4 thirds. 
from here, we're going to get into difference quotients. And if you're going to study calculus in the future, this is something you're going to have to learn. And it's something we start off with at the beginning of calculus again. Um, ignore this illustrated in an example 11. I don't really remember what example that was in our textbook. I didn't copy that onto your slides. What we're going to be doing is finding the difference quotient for some various functions. And so here's example 6. So I want to find the difference quotient for f of x equals 2x minus 3. So I'm going to color code this for you. I'm going to do f of x plus h in pink. I'll subtract my original function in green, and I'll divide by h in purple. All right, yesterday in your warm-up, I asked you to find f of x plus h for a particular uh, function. So it's the same thing. I'm going to take x plus h, and it's going to go in for x right there. And then I'm going to subtract my original function, which is 2x minus 3. Then I'm going to divide all of that by h. And then to finish it off, I will use the distributive property. And I'm going to keep on simplifying. So I notice that those two added to 0, those two added to 0. 2h divided by h is 2. So my difference quotient is 2. We're going to try that again with a quadratic. So again, I'm going to do this piece in pink, this piece in green, and I'll divide in purple. So this time, x plus h has to go in here for x and here. All right, so there's the original function with x plus h inserted. Then I'm going to subtract my original function here, and I'm going to divide by h. I will have to FOIL out the top, so remember that's x plus h times x plus h. So it would be x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Then I'll distribute here. And then in green, I'll have minus x squared plus 4x minus 7. And then I will be dividing that by h. All right. Those add to 0. These add to 0. These add to 0. All I have left is 2xh plus h squared minus 4h, all divided by h. Every one of the terms on top <coughs> excuse me, has an h in it, so I can factor that out. Let me switch colors. And divide that by the h on the bottom. These are going to cancel, divide out, and my answer is 2x plus h minus 4. What do you think? So that's not too bad. Um, if you don't do the factoring and canceling there, you can always do like the heart, but you have to do it three ways now to divide out your h's. All right, in your practice problems, you get to practice that a couple times. So this is your regular difference quotient here, and this one's just a little bit different. So we're going to do f of 5 plus h minus f of 5, divide by h. So I want you to give those a shot. In these earlier practice problems, um, you're finding the domain for each piece. And let's see, for these up here, you're doing some function values for me. Okay, that's the end of lesson 2.5a.